Welcome back guys. Today we're going to make a video. We're going to be installing a RP2040 on a Nintendo Switch OLED. However, we're going to go more into detail. I'm going to be explaining exactly how it's done. I've been getting a lot of boards, a lot of OLEDs with uh, botched installs like bad capacitors. People knock them out. Uh, people stop halfway and they're afraid to do it. So the purpose of this video today is to explain to you guys or to guide you through the details uh, of how to install it. This is the way I do it. I would call this uh, a guide. In the, in the past, I've, my, I've made some installations and I quickly installed them for you guys or, or showed you guys in the video. But this time we're going to focus. We're going to stop a little bit and explain a little more into detail of what I do and why I do it. And hopefully this helps somebody, some, some of you guys out there that decide to take it upon yourselves and install this chip. It's not that hard. You just have to take your time and know what you're doing. So as you can see, I have the board open. Again, this is an OLED. We're going to be installing this chip here, which is the latest RP2040. It's, it works very well, very stable. A lot of people like to install the NX Instinct. For whatever reason, they both do the same. Uh, they claim that the, that the Instinct boots better or boots faster. This have gone a long, a long way. They boot almost uh, set in seconds. So I don't tell, I can't see much of a difference. Anyways, I recommend this one, but let's get to the installation. So we're going to pry open the uh, CPU here, the cover, the shield. And the way I like to do this is by simply getting some, uh, some metal, I guess, pointy, uh, Point thing is here that we can actually use. They, they, they are very, very strong. So I recommend you guys. I got this off of a place called Hobby Lobby, so you guys can get them yourselves. They're in the craft section. Anyways, what I'm doing here is is prying this open. We are going to use it later. So we want to pry it carefully. At this point, we can lift it up from the corner here. And let me know on the, on the comments, guys, if you guys have any questions uh, and I have the time, I don't mind sharing or helping you guys out, okay? So here, we're gonna remove some of this solder paste. We're gonna put some clean thermal paste here. I'm sorry, thermal paste. We're gonna put some clean, high quality thermal paste at the end. Uh, what I'm doing is simply removing this excess thermal paste that's sewn, uh, Nintendo uses and just putting it on the side. So again, I'm going to try to be thorough and explain every process in detail so that if you guys decide to do it yourselves, you guys don't get lost. I am cleaning the CPU. It doesn't have to be super clean, but the cleaner, the better. The what I'm worried about is exposing these two capacitors here that we are going to be soldering onto. Next, we're going to grab some of these pliers. If they are pointy at the, at the end and you just be careful with them, you simply cut here. I like to use my nail to simply push back. Careful not to knock out these components on the side. You bend this backwards a few times and it comes off. Next, that same tool that I showed you guys, you use it to scratch this, this point here, which is the D point. We are going to, to scratch it carefully. This is, this is one of the hardest points when it comes to this job or to, I guess, beginners. They often mess this up. You got to be careful. Don't scratch the line here. Just simply scratch the point. And what we're removing is simply the solder, the uh, mask off of the board. So gently scratch it, take your time. As you can see, I've exposed that point. We're going to leave it at that for now. We're going to turn it over and continue to the back over here with an and is. This is where the dot zero point is. We are cutting that metal piece. We are removing that metal piece again. I use my nails. You guys can use any pliers if you have any. Simply rock it back and forth and you're all set. Next, we're going to be installing this adapter. 
and we slide it in and that same tool that I showed you guys we use here okay we align it up you can kind of get a feeling for it after you've done this a while you know that this is installed or located right that's where it goes next I apply some flux the type of flux I'm using is uh, today actually we're using something called a Devo and this is NC-559 ASM but honestly any flux works you can use Antec you can use this one you can use anything you have just again be careful take your time and you, you'll be fine so next I'm going to turn on my fume extractor and I'm going to apply some heat here what I'm doing, and this is another very important thing to keep in mind, you want to push this down. And you want to solder after and then kind of let go. Okay, and the reason you want to push it and make sure that it's, it's tucked in there because if not, in the, in the long run, it'll get loose. And then you have to open the system again and then you have to push it in there again. Same thing on this side. If you guys can tell or can see, you see how this is bent here on the sides? That's exactly what I want. Because it's tucked in there, it's not going anywhere. Some people were asking if I did the kam kamikaze uh, hack. And yes, I can do it. it. It has been done. But if you do this right, you don't have to. You don't have to risk exposing the line or taking another 10, 15 minutes to, to do it. If you do this right, you're not going to have any issues. Anyways, proceeding to the installation, we're going to go back to that point. And we're going to focus in here, like so. And this is another important point that uh, if you're not careful, you can mess things up. So you want to get a, you definitely want to have a microscope. You want to get your solder. By the way, the solder that I use is, is, uh, let it solder, so that's what you need. And I just changed my tip, so it's not pretend. Uh, the tip is not pretend. So sometimes, if you if you have your tip and you're doing this the first time, you're gonna have trouble getting some solder on that point. You want to pretend that point. So let's uh, bear with me. And there you go. So let me clean that up a little bit so you guys can see. That is what you want it to be, how you want it to, to look. Pretty much a little solder ball on there on that D point. You see that? That's exactly what you want. Now we are going to prepare the flex cables since this is a RP2040 this one's come this one comes with uh, this flex cable I also like to pretend this area here like like that that's perfect we are going to line it up I am using more flux to to solder this underneath, we are going to line it up. And see how I'm using this same tool that I showed you guys earlier. It's very handy. You pretty much use it as a second hand. And see, I'm using it here. I'm using it here. So this is lined up right there. Let me see if I can focus a little better. Maybe like that. So we want to put some flux here. The next thing we do is grab our uh, soldering solder and secure this flex cable.
That should be better. Now I like to use flux on every point that we have here. You must use flux. And then use this same piece of instrument. It's almost like a needle, but it's not that, that sharp. You secure this area here, secure this one here on this side. And finally, we're going to use that point, that D point that has to be soldered very nice. And the way you do that is you grab your solder, push down on the, on the flex cable and just put some solder in there. And see how beautiful that is? It's not going anywhere. It might be a little too much solder, but it doesn't matter. It's perfectly on there. It's not going to go anywhere. Finally, we're going to use that. We're going to secure this A point here. I get this a lot, guys. When people ship stuff in, they usually knock this capacitor, this resistor out, and we have to replace it with a new one. Next, we have the actual chip. I will be using, uh, I'm just going to kind of situate it in place and then, and then finally I will uh, put the shield back on and everything. So we're just going to put this here for now. Like so, and uh, I'm going to zoom out. I like to use this kind of wire. It took me a while, a while to find this wire. This is 30 age, 30, 38 gauge wire. Very thin, but not so thin to the point where you can't hold it, you can't work with it. It works perfect for this application, for this job. Where did I find it? AliExpress. I don't remember the, the, uh, the seller, so just do a simple search there, and I'm sure you'll find it. it. Took a while to get here, but but I got it. All right, so we are applying a little bit more flux on that that zero point. Now I'm using some tweezers. Getting some more solder. That is in place, and uh, hopefully you guys can see that, but now get, grab yourself some pliers and gently cut that. You don't want to disturb this area because if you do, then you'll have problems in the future. Same thing with the reset point. For the reset point, I use a slightly thick and thicker wire. Reason being is uh, I don't need it to have it so thin and and uh, I read somewhere that it's supposed to like have better better uh, booting time and it works really well. This is probably like a 36 gauge or something. Wrap it around. You don't have any excess wire. What I like to do is simply hold the wire against the solder point that I'm going to solder and just solder right there. There's a little bit of a wire plastic that stays there, but if you want to burn it, you can. If you want to, I just pull it. If you want to burn it like this, you, you can, but you don't have to. I mean, it's just wire. It looks really nice, right? And then you don't have that extra wire floating around, as you can see. Same thing on that D point, on that C point. Finally, guys, we have to do the, the flex cable, uh, the CPU flex cable. And that one's very simple. Simply light it up. And again, that same tool that I'm using, let's call it a pick. You simply push on the sides. And then you do the same thing on the other side. All right, so.
So now that you that we've done that, we we apply some flux. We'll be applying flux there on the on the ground point, and then here as well. The solder tip that I'm using is a C. Let me double check. <laughs> this is a C. C115-I and what I'm using is a Sugon-89 uh, solder station works really good it's very 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 economical very very inexpensive but it works just like one of the pro ones you can find it on L Aliexpress here what I'm doing is I'm just rubbing the side of the uh, of the uh, solder there next to the capacitor gently and same thing on the left side okay on the right side as you can see, solder joints are, are, are perfect. I don't think they can get better. Same thing here and same thing here. There you go. So now we grab a little bit more, more of solder. We'll put it on this point to secure it so it doesn't go anywhere. Knowing that it looks very well, we put this back on here. By the way, I met a guy on... Um, via the website he called me up and I just wanted to say to, to say hi to him his name is Luis from Illinois Luis how are you buddy como esta Luis saludos um, anyways getting back into the uh, to the installation I think this is done I'm going to turn off the the uh, fume extractor and we're going to go through this real quick so we have the joints soldered perfectly we have this connected we have the C point nice, the, the three volts, the A point. We can check every point with a multimeter. And if you get somewhere between five and 800, sometimes even 900 for the C point, you're fine. I'm not gonna do it because I know, I've, I trust myself. What I am gonna show you guys though is that it boots. I'm gonna plug it in directly to the, to the, uh, to the board. And we're, we're going we're gonna to see the lights and the activity. It's going to flash blue. And then eventually it should flash green once it glitches. Later on, I will put the, the cap on here and put some, some thermal paste on there. All right, ready? Let's, let's check it out. I'm plugging it in now. So as you can see, it's, it's flashing blue. And then it should, there you go. So it flashed, it flashed green. Another way you can tell that it, it worked fine if you have a an amp meter. Let me show you guys which one I have. It's another very inexpensive one. You can tell that it's drawing a certain amount of, of, of amps and if it's drawing from 9 to 13.9 to uh, 0.13 amps, then you're good. Okay, get yourself one of these. They're very helpful. It'll tell you when there's a short or, or if there's activity on a on a switch or anything that plugs into USB. This is a simple one. There's, there's some com complicated ones out there. You don't need anything fancy. This one works really good. All right, so this is the detailed installation of, a, of an RP2040 on a Nintendo Switch OLED board. If you guys have any questions, any comments, any suggestions, you can post them there on the comments. Thank you guys for your support. I appreciate all of you guys that have uh, sent in your switches and have trusted me with your devices. It means a lot to me. We really enjoy what, I, what we do. We like uh, fixing things and, and soldering stuff. So thanks again. We will continue to provide videos and uh, great customer service as long as uh, our services are necessary and required from you guys. So. Thanks again. Visit our website at wayayo.org and leave a comment. Hit subscribe, hit like. We'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.